Good morning, I'm Sharon with the Pickaway County Library and I'm here to bring to you your preschool story time. Our song is going to be what we sang last week, I Hear Thunder, and it's to the tune of Frere Jaca. So remember when you say, I hear thunder, I hear thunder, you stomp your feet. And when I say, hark, do you put your hand behind your ear and then the pitter patter raindrops will just do that. Then I'm all wet, so are you. We'll point, are you ready? I hear thunder, I hear thunder, hark do you, hark do you, pitter-patter raindrops, pitter-patter raindrops, I'm all wet, so are you. All right, if you did that, give yourselves a hand. We're going to go ahead and read our book. Our book today is King Puck. It's written and illustrated by Michael Garland and Harper Collins is our publisher. And this is based and inspired by an Irish festival. Are you ready? Come join me. King Puck. Aw, oh, Finny, Seema said to his goat. We're so lucky. Our mountain is the most beautiful in all of Ireland. It was beautiful, but it was lonely. Only the wee fairies live nearby. Seamus had no one to talk to but his goat. At night, Seamus liked to read the stories of Finn McCool. The goat loved when the hero giant tasted the magic salmon and gained the gift of wisdom. Finny wanted to be wise too. These stories are a joy, but wouldn't some new books be wonderful? Seamus asked. Finny sighed, wishing for an answer. The fairies began to pity the sad farmer and his goat. One night, while Seamus was asleep, they cast a spell. The next morning, Seamus got the shock of his life when he said, Good morning, to Finny. The goat said, Good morning, right back. Then Finny said, I'm famished. What a lovely day it is. The river is up. I wonder if the trout are biting. How did you learn to speak? Seamus asked. I don't know, replied Finny. Perhaps I learned from you. Seamus was happy, but the fairies weren't finished with their plan. Later that day, the two friends discovered a handbill. The King Puck Festival. What is that? Finny asked. The judges picked the best goat to crown King Puck, the only king in Ireland. It's just for one day, but it's quite an honor. Let's go, cried Finny. Seamus hastily packed some food and proudly brushed Finney's hair. You'll be named King Puck for sure, he exclaimed. Happy and wonderful, they talked and walked all day and night down the mountain path. Look at all those ribbons and flags, Seamus said to Finney as they crossed the bridge into Killerdlin. And isn't this music splendid, Seamus remarked. Finney clacked his hooves in time to a fancy jig. Suddenly, the music stopped as the farmers and their grand goats entered the square. Now, feeling ordinary and a little foolish, Finney joined Seamus at the end of the line. The judges were less than impressed with Finney. They turned to walk away when he stepped forward. May I please have another chance, he asked. I'd like to recite the tale of Finn McCool. Wow, the judges are really... Surprised. The people of Killerglen had heard the story before, but never told by a goat. When Finney completed the tale, the crowd went wild. The judges had no choice. They picked Finney to be King Puck. With great fanfare, Finney and Seamus led a parade through the narrow streets of town. The crowd cheered as the mayor of Killerglen placed a gold crown on Finney's head. I name thee King Puck, the only king in Ireland, he proclaimed. King Puck is mayor. It is my pleasure to grant you one wish. What will it be? Gold, silver, a mountain of hay? Finney glanced at Seamus. He knew what they wanted the most. Books, he said. We'd like nothing more than books. The crowd cheered and Finney felt as wise as Finn McCool. Seamus and Finney never wanted for another book or better company. Once a week, 
Miss Margaret Mary Carney, the librarian from Killer Glen, drove up the steep mountain with a fresh bag of books. King Puck got his wish, and the fairies were happy too. Well, thank you for joining me. For our craft today, I have a PDF that'll be loaded in the comment section. And I just have some clovers here in the shape of a heart. And what you'll do is you'll just cut them out. You can collar these, cut them out and glue them together. And then these are already collared if you wanna cut those out and glue them together to get your lucky shamrock. Come join me for this craft. Okay, for the sake of time, I went ahead and I just cut the ones that were already collared. And what you can do is go ahead and just use some glue or a glue stick and go ahead and glue your pieces together. And it helps if you put a little background behind them. So I just used a piece of blue construction paper. You can use anything, some scrap paper, whatever you have on hand. And then this is our stem. I'm going to glue that underneath here so it's not sticking out as much and I need to put a little more glue here. There we go. Now for extra, if you have it, I have some split peas. This is only if you have this on hand. I'm going to glue, you have to put a lot of glue on this to get them to stick. This just gives it some texture and dimension. And if, you, if your little one likes to collar better, it helps fill in a little bit of the gaps there. And then just sprinkle a few. And then you'll wanna set this aside for at least a few hours to dry. You can put as many and as few as you want. And then once it's dry, when you lift it up, the loose ones will fall off and you'll be set with your lucky shamrock. All right, we're gonna go ahead and move into our activity. For an extra little activity, you'll also find this PDF in the comment section, along with a PDF of the little rhyme. This is going to be a little counting activity. Five little shamrocks growing near my door. Someone picked one and now there are four. Let's count them, one, two, three, four. Four little shamrocks growing just for me. Someone picked one and now there are three. Let's count them. One, two, three. Three little shamrocks growing just for you. Someone picked one, now there are two. Let's count them. One, two. Two little shamrocks growing in the sun. Someone picked one and now there is one. One. One little shamrock growing just for fun. Someone picked and now there are none. I have none. We're gonna go ahead and do a little STEM activity as well with this story time, focusing in on, again, rain and storm and clouds. So we're going to do a stormy cloud. So you're gonna need some shaving cream, a jar or a container that's clear, filled almost all the way with water, food coloring. And then I just put that food coloring in some water and I've got my pipette again. And we're going to make a stormy cloud. Are you ready to join me? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get some shaving cream in there. All right, now the goal is to get the blue water, I colored it blue so it's easier to see, to get it to start coming down through my stormy cloud. This looks exciting. Oh, there it comes, look at it. Like a big old storm cloud dropping down its rain. Here we go. Thank you for joining me today. Go ahead and come in sometime when we're open and pick some books. We've got lots of books for you to read on springtime and rain and thunder and storms, goats, anything you want. You come in and see one of us and I'll see you next week.